Okay guys, welcome to video number 4 of 30. You remember the last video we did on Walmart first aid stuff? Well, oddly enough it all fit into this little Ziploc bag. And most of it was junk. A few things in there we're going to keep for later. But now I think it's time to make a low cost, cheap ass, level 1 bleed kit. So, here we go. So when designing our cheap ass level one bleed kit, we always need to revert back to our training. Some of us went to some very high end C, triple C, TTP training, paid way too much for it. Others uh, were just beat to death in the military about it. You will learn by the numbers, I will teach you. Training has changed over the years, but I do have a certificate for you. Yeah, and it's free, here you go. Yeah, let's just use a little bit of that. Okay, so. Going back to the originals, start the breathing, stop the bleeding, protect the wound, and treat for shock. Those are the first four things that the, you get that gets beat into you. Yes, I know at some point they reversed it and changed it from start the breathing to stop the bleeding, then start the breathing. So either or can make sense. But this isn't a first aid class. Everybody knows that a first aid kit is a first aid kit is a first aid kit. If you go back to the old days when first aid kits were made, they were all about the wound. And that's really what first aid kits are for. Unfortunately, they've all devolved into ibuprofen and bee stings and freaking tourniquets. I mean, yes, I have tourniquets. I'll show them to you in a minute. Hell, I'll even show you here. You know, if you're not careful, your first aid kit can quickly devolve into that. That's what I keep in my car. It's got everything in it. But that's not what we're talking about today. We're going to talk about a, something a little bit smaller. Maybe, oh, oh look, a tourniquet. Oh, oh my God, there's everything here. Someone got shot, I need to stick that in their chest. That's not what we're talking about. We're going to talk about a level one bleed kit that won't cost you an arm and a leg. If you need to go get yourself a stupid little green bag that pops open, you can get them on eBay for, or uh, Amazon for anywhere from $17 to $31. If you feel like you need a tourniquet, Go ahead and get one. The recon ones are the cheapest ones, and they're not cheap. They actually work. They're not cheap China crap that will kill somebody or, or just completely fail. Um, the recon versions, they do work. They're about $16. They're good gear. If you absolutely positively have to have the best tourniquet on the market, that's going to be from North American Rescue, and that's going to be around $31. Uh, I think they got a deal for two for like 53 bucks. So, you know, you can never have enough tourniquets if you want a lot of tourniquets. Uh, if you want a chest seal, yeah, go buy chest seals. They're about $16. Just make sure you get one for the front and one for the back, entry and exit. Okay, with all that said, level one, cheap ass, bleed kit, coming up right now. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna start with, and you know, I hate to like steal all the stuff here, but if you remember from the first video, I told you the one thing that we wanted to keep was the blade stop. So we're going to take that, we're going to throw that out there. You can still buy that. Uh, they're in the process of changing a few things. Woo! But the bottom line is, this is probably a good idea to have because now we're up here. We're actually starting at the very top and we'll come back to this. So, level one, what do we need? Let's go shopping. Hi, I'm back. So yeah, I did a little shopping last night. Went over to Walmart and uh, Dollar Tree. Kind of found deals in different places. So let's see what we found. Starting at the bottom of the blood tree, basic band-aids. I like the flexible ones because they say flexible on them, pretty cool. I like the flexible ones because they actually stick to your body. They're cheap. I'll put the uh, price down, all the prices for everything down below and where I bought them. Uh, I probably would stick about 10 of these inside of there. This box has uh, 30 of them. They're medium size. You don't need fancy knuckle, knuckle uh, band-aids and or just waterproof this because you know what even waterproof band-aids come off in the water so we're going to take that we're just going to set it over here on the side so the next thing i got were these here's a funny thing no one wants to buy a box of 400 or 100 or however many hundreds of gloves come in a box now no matter what their price is you're like well i can never have enough 
Yeah, good for you. You can have, yeah, I have boxes of these things laying around. I didn't need to buy any more, but I did just for you guys. So taking a good look at that, guess where I found these? These are not in the first aid department of Walmart. These guys, 50 in a box, yeah, a small amount. They're medium gloves, they're neutral, and you buy them in the painting section. Yeah, there's your little hint. So you're gonna need at least two, two sets of these bad boys. Make sure that they're neutral, not vinyl, because if you don't know anything about blood and vinyl, when you get blood on vinyl, it becomes, whoa, super slippery. And that's not what you wanna do when you're trying to help somebody with their wound. Setting that over here now. Boop. Next, I picked up these non-stick pads with adhesive tabs. So they're gonna kinda stick to you a little bit. Uh, they're more for like covering abrasions, things like that. But uh, it looks like there are 10 of them in here and I'll take a couple of these and stick them inside my kit. Uh, once again, price is down below. Keeping with our blood theme, yeah, we need always gonna need a few butterflies here because the reality is is that if you need stitches, you're gonna need butterflies. And you're gonna know as soon as you start to mess with that wound whether you need stitches or not. So, always have a few of these. They come 12 to a box, and we're probably gonna throw about six of these bad boys in here, depending on how they're packaged. Okay, so the next thing, rolled gauze. Now, when you buy rolled gauze, you need to have at least two rolls, okay? And the reasoning is, is that one is none, and two is one, something might happen to this, but this is where we're starting to move into, oh my God, this is a serious wound and we actually need to pack the wound. And that's what you actually use rolled gauze for. I picked these up for a dollar piece at the old Dollar Tree and uh, now we're moving into the heavier blood zone. Okay, so now we're starting to talk about more blood where we need to start pack packing gauze into stuff and it's not a boo-boo anymore, this is serious. We need to stop the bleeding. Uh, and if we don't have our bleed stop, which we'll talk about in the kit, um, then we need to be able to pack that wound and we need to be able to get that guy out of there. But we need to hold the wound in place. Now, sometimes it's just a patch. And you can pick this up at the Dollar Tree for $1. Yeah, that's right. This is paper tape. That way you won't have any, you won't have any uh, allergies to it. And then this is a self-adhering wrap, similar to an ace wrap. And uh, this is what you're gonna do once you pack that wound, say it's on a leg or an arm, yeah, right around the neck. Well, you could technically use it around the neck, but I don't know if that would be too comfortable. Anyway, so you use this to keep that rolled gauze in place and you get the guy to the hospital. Okay, so now all the superfluous stuff that should be inside this little bitty kit. Okay, you remember I said I started with start the breathing, stop the bleeding, protect the wound, treat for shock. Well, protect the wound could mean a lot of different things. Basically, a bandage, cover it up. But unless this guy's like gushing blood and we got to get him out of there like right now, well, it's always good to have a little bit of triple antibiotic. Now, triple antibiotic, I'm going to translate for the people who like to spend more money than they need to. That's Neosporin. Yeah, it's the same thing. Read the back. So we're going to take this little tube that's inside this box. We're going to throw it in our kit. And we're going to say, yeah, now we have the ability to treat a cut, a scrape, a you know, whatever, with some kind of antibacterial or antibiotic, I'm sorry. Uh, and that's going to help to keep, uh, help to protect the wound. Even if we're not going to go to the hospital, it's a start. It's the process that will start to take care of the wound. Another little nice to have in the protect the wound realm is something to rinse the wound out or something to uh, clean the wound with. Uh, I like hydrogen peroxide uh, because it has a very long shelf life and it doesn't burn. Uh, if you have to work on a kid and you're gonna think you're gonna irrigate their wound with alcohol, you're gonna have a serious problem on your hands. Uh, and uh, also iodine expires. So um, iodine, while well, great, uh, yeah, you can't stay in the kit for a super long period of time. And what I do is I'll take and I'll go down to Old Wally World and I'll get one of these little spray bottles right here. Now the reason I use a spray bottle is because it gives me choices. One, I can spray it. Or I can, too, take this out and use it to irrigate a wound. And that'll clean it out as well as get rid of any of the goo that's going to grow inside of it pretty quickly. You pour it in here, and it's got this nice little cap right here on top. That way the button doesn't get pushed. You tighten it up, you put it in your kit, and now you have the ability to clean a wound. Something else you'll find at Walmart that goes in your kit, 
perfect. You won't have to spend an arm and a leg for on it. Is believe it or not, they sell bandage scissors. Now we call them trauma shears, uh, and uh, these were really cheap actually. But when you take them out, looks like they work to me. I'm not seeing any big wiggle in them, so hey. How many times are we really going to need to use these things? And if they get covered with blood, well, you're probably never going to use them again anyway, so why spend $13 on a pair of trauma shears when you're not an EMT? Something to think about, but we're going to put that in our kit. Okay, lastly, something to clean up with. Listen, if you're messing with blood and, uh, you know, the gloves, the gloves are going to be nice, but you might actually end up getting into some real serious messes. You're going to need to be able to clean yourself up a little bit. You may need to be able to clean whatever up a little bit. You know, I picked these up. These are nice and clean wipes. Uh, these are antibacterial hand wipes, and they're going to help you to clean yourself up a little bit. They are not sanitizing wipes. They're antibacterial. So they're going to get rid of, you know, just stupid little things. Maybe you use this to wash your hands before you work or, or whatever it may be. It's just a little nice to have. It's really not first aid, but I always throw these in here. That way I can clean stuff up. And then moving back to the bleed stop. Bleed stop. This is our, this is our top tier stuff. So if something really went, went wrong, we're going to throw this. We're going to, guys got a gigantic gaping wound. We're going to throw this bleed stop in there. We're going to start packing that wound with gauze uh, and we're going to maybe put a bandage over the top of it if we've got a big enough one. And yes, we probably will. Uh, and then we're going to wrap that wound as well as we can with our little ace wrap. And we're going to get that guy the hell out of there. So now what will it look like when we really unpack all this stuff? Here we go. All right, very simple stuff. Once we get it out of all the packages and start to prepare to, to actually assemble the kit, what do we end up with? We've got some uh, butterfly bandages. we got uh, some basic... Uh, flexible bandages that work. We have some miniature trauma shears that'll get through some stuff. We've got two sets of neutral gloves. We've got two sets of rolled gauze. We've got our ace wrap bandage holder. We've got some paper tape. We've got some antibacterial, triple antibacterial. We've got some bleed stuff for the bad stuff. We can clean up a little bit. And we've got three medium non-stick bandages. Pretty simple kit. Now we just need to put it into a bag. Let's do that. Okay, so yeah, all of that really fit into a quart size Ziploc bag. Isn't that magical? So for all you guys that are spending $30, $50, $120 $50, for some of these little green bags, you might want to rethink it. Yes, once again, if you want to add a tourniquet, add a tourniquet. Just get a bigger Ziploc bag. If you want to add a bullet gunshot wound stuff, just... Make your bag a little bit bigger. You know, they come in gallon size bags too. But you know what? This will take care of 99% of all of my trauma needs. Okay, so until the next video, remember to stay safe and have a great day.